Welcome to this podcast. I'm your host, Zach Schwartz. And before we bring in today's special guest, we have a cold open. And I haven't done this in a while, but based on the news that is broken a couple hours ago, I feel like I have to comment on the fact that Lionel Messi wants to leave Barcelona. Now, I've already had a friend contact me and ask me if I'm burning my jerseys. If I had any, which of course I have several. A Lionel Messi jerseys, as any Barcelona does fan, fan does from the past couple of years. Uh, but no, I will not be, because in fact, I don't blame Leo for this choice. I don't at all. I think any Barcelona fan knows for the past couple of years, this team has been declining. A lot of the board situation been declining rapidly. A lot of the transfers, such as Antoine Griezmann, Dembele, uh, and Philip Coutinho, of course, being the best example of this, aren't working. And I don't think that's also the player's fault. I think they're just buying $100 million people when they can't even fit them into the lineup, a la Anton Griezmann playing a winger this whole season while being best served as a counterattacking uh, center forward that he played at Atletico, much to the delight of those type of fans. So I don't blame him for leaving. And as a fan, it sucks. It's sad. But the team has been worse off than ever before, um, going back years and years and years that he's been at the club. Andres Iniesta is gone. Xavi is gone. Jared Piquet is in noticeable decline. Um, you got players like Luis Suarez now, his best friend at the club, who's also rumored to be leading, possible to Ajax. Ivan Rakitic, a great player from 2015, you know, uh, Champions League team in central midfield, who is also seems to be on the way out. So a lot of the friends are leaving, which, you know, is it that big of a deal of professional football? I don't know, but to him it might be. And also just the board, he should have no confidence in this board. They've completely wrecked the club. Um, they've been going after manager after manager with no success. You know, Ronald Koeman now, former club legend of the Dream Team in 1992. Maybe he can come in and change some things, and I know they've had conversations before. But honestly, why wouldn't he want to leave? And of course, the problem now is he's such a good player, and he still is to anybody. He's, you know, nearing his young 30s. He's still in his young 30s, excuse me, sorry. He's getting older. However, he led both the Spanish League in goals with 25, four more than Karim Benzema in next place. And he had 21 assists, which is 10 more than the next player on that list. So a 2020 season, obviously, goals and assists just in league, not even counting Champions League, is still remarkable, the best player. And even no matter what Barcelona did, I was arguing for months that he should still win the Ballon d'Or no matter what Argentina or Barcelona do this year, because he is the only reason Barcelona were within five points of Real Madrid during this uh, season. He's the only reason why Barcelona even qualified for the Champions League. And that showed when they were bludgeoned by Bayern Munich 8-2 to in the Champions League quarterfinals. I was hopeful, maybe, of Messi's magic turning that tie around. But honestly, I'm happy they got crushed because there needs to be change at this club. And I've talked about it before on this podcast, so I don't want to crush it too much. I want to keep it on Messi-focused here. But to anyone saying Messi is leaving, how does that make you feel? It makes sense. It makes complete utter sense. And now for a player of his talent, how is it going to happen? Well, now they're in debates over the fact of there's the clause in the contract that says Messi can choose to leave for free each summer, so he should choose. Barcelona are arguing that clause is already passed uh, because it's set for June or July of every year, whichever month, I'm not sure. However, of course, the season was still being played in June and July, and Barcelona season just finished up, and the Champions League did just finish up. So... There is an argument to be made that he could still leave this summer for free. However, if he doesn't, it's $700 million there for a club to do to buy him. So that's not going to happen. Not even PSG with the whole uh, Cutter ruling family behind them have that type of money. Uh, so if he's leaving, it's got to be for free. So that's the first thing. This is going to be played out in court, which is great. We love soccer in court, right? Uh, throwback tax evasion for both Messi and Ronaldo there. Uh, so, okay, let's say he does leave. Let's say the court rules in Messi's favor. Where is he going? To me, you know, there's been uh, rumors that it could be PSG. Don't see it happening. Why would he? Doesn't make sense to me. He'd be the he'd be the leader there on that team. Doesn't not necessary. He'd be a leader on any team, but especially you know he he team up with Neymar and Mbappe again. What's the point? Uh, Juventus. Which do we really see Messi teaming up with an old Ronaldo at this point? That doesn't seem right. Uh, I don't think that happens either. 
So to me, there really is only one team, and it's Manchester City. And the reason is Pep. The reason is Pep Guardiola. There's a proof of concept there that Messi has worked with Pep before, understands his tactics. They know each other very well. And, of course, that was the most successful period of Messi's career. And Barcelona itself, when Pep was in charge. And also, it seems like when Messi had the most uh, enjoyable time there as well. And Pep represents some of the things that Barcelona have gotten away from recently. And the fact of youth uh, teams being integrated. You know, it was Pep who gave Sergio Busquets his first start. He gave Pedro a chance when he was back, when he was winning Champions Leagues with the squad of Barcelona. So I think Manchester City, and of course they could afford his wages, obviously. Uh, I don't think anyone who knows soccer a little bit doesn't need uh, that explanation there. So I think Manchester City is the most likely team for him. And I have friends who are Manchester City uh, fr- uh, fans. Both of them have been on the podcast before, Kyle Milner and Joe Graw. I've already sent them text congratulating them on their uh, on their coup of Lionel Messi. Uh, and Kyle Milner here just texts me back says, I don't like hearing that for some reason. Well, Kyle, maybe you should. Because uh, it, it might happen. I mean, uh, it's like I said, it's the court now. It's not Messi's choice. It's in the court to, 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 to debate the contract and how COVID uh, affected that in terms of that contract. But, I mean, this has been a long time coming. And I also think, you know, there's uh, like uh, there's just there's pain, you know, here for me uh, as a Barcelona fan. Uh, a lot of times that they've been able to save me from the pain my other teams, being a Detroit sports fan, uh, have uh, have saved me the, all the anguish that those teams provide. And now it seems like I'll be getting anguish on more sides. Of course, people are sitting here saying there's more to sports. There's more to life than sports. Yeah, you're right, but like that's that's really important to me. So, I mean, it is what I wrote my medical school personal statement on. So if that shows you how much we care about this and how much I have to swallow here for my love for the club, for the fact that I agree with the player using his exercise, his rights and saying I need to leave, that's how bad you know it is. And now for the part of the podcast with a hopefully, hopefully happier uh, tone other than the talk of Lionel Messi leaving my beloved Barcelona. I'm bringing in the great, powerful, wonderful man. He hasn't been on here in a while, uh, but I think that's the pandemic taking this away from us at some degree. It's Mr. Thorne. Thorne, how are you doing? Hello, Zach. Great to be here again. Hopefully our technical difficulties don't persist this time. Yeah, this is uh, this is attempt number two here uh, for the uh, for this episode. We already had some uh, connection issues. You know, uh, we're both in new apartments, or and it's on my end, so I clearly don't have the Joe Rogan Studio set up here. Uh, but we're uh, <laughs> we're gonna keep pushing through. We're gonna we're gonna provide this here. We're gonna figure this out. So, <laughs> so Zach, intrigue me, or I, I'm intrigued. Tell me about this. Uh, this messy situation here because I, I have no idea what you're talking about <laughs> so my my favorite club barcelona basically that i already uh, did a little uh, segment here earlier just uh, kind of complained about it because uh, barcelona now used to be one of the best clubs i think you knew that part uh in the european uh, soccer scene and now they've kind of gone to crap over the last six years messi is still the best player in the world he just finished a 20 goal 20 assist campaign which is mostly unheard of. And he declares he wants to leave Barcelona. He you know, talked about it through the media, and that news broke about an hour ago. So it's pretty fresh. Um, and he's uh, really never uh, had this level of discontent before. So, you know, I mean, it's just, you know, all my teams are just going to suck, and I'm just going to be sad all the time. That's what I've come to understand. I clearly did something wrong in my last life here with being a Detroit <laughs> sports fan and uh, Messi wanting to leave now. So, yeah, there we are. Dang, so he's just tired of being the only good one on the team, huh? So it seems like. So it seems like. And frankly, if I were in his position, I don't blame him. Uh, I don't. I do not blame him at all. Because if I were that good, I'm not saying I am at anything, I'm not. But if I were, <laughs> I, I understand the uh, the mentality there. You know, not not everyone can be the uh, superhero on every you know every team. I mean, even Tony Stark has his Captain America, right? So true and even he did leave the avengers for a while that's true he did he uh, he exited he went he went to a uh, farm that's right yeah that was such a good movie i can't believe that's the last marvel movie or i guess uh spider-man was but um is that okay so th- this was not in our n- initial cut of the show that lasted the whole five minutes so i guess the guess is this is where we're gonna go with isn't it <laughs> so obviously we had spider-man after the uh, end game the awesome thing that was end game isn't it like i know black Widow was supposed to come out in february or in March. Or, uh, no, it was May, right? Sorry, I'm uh, misquoting my dates. Um, 
But I feel like this this pandemic, you know, and the delay of Black Widow, I think it's coming out in November now. It doesn't feel like like the whole like thing has like a finality to it now, like that they didn't intend, but it's like, yeah, we're really moving on to a new era now because it's been so long. Honestly, yeah. Like even though like I, if I don't know, if Black if Black Widow was was, you know, the next um like continuation of the stuff, I feel like it'd make more sense. But at the same time, yeah, you're right. Like it is a different, different, uh, different era. It, yeah, I, I was thinking the other day, like, man, I I haven't seen anything with Marvel in a while. Maybe I'm just, maybe I'm really just kind of disinterested after Endgame. Like that was kind of it for me. Then I was like, wait, there hasn't been anything for me to be interested in. It's all been pushed back, and I, I don't know. I didn't actually really realize it. Even even when I worked at you know the the drive-in theater this this year. I just didn't like movies didn't really like do anything for me. Cause especially, I mean, we showed a lot of old movies, but I, I was just so movie ignorant this year. <laughs> and I thought it was a, a me problem and not a COVID problem. I kind of forgot about that part. Yeah. I had the same type of a uh, feeling. So I was like, man, maybe I'm just not into these type of superhero movies anymore. And I'm like, well, there just hasn't been anything that's, uh, that's come out literally in a, more than a year, at least for uh, Marvel, obviously. And I know, uh, Birds of Prey came out right in February uh, for DC, but I, I don't think I was ever going to really watch that in the theater anyway. Um, so, yeah, no. And even now, like we have Black Widow November twenty twenty. I have the schedule pulled up now. Eternals is February twenty one, and then you got uh, Shang Chi Legend of the Ten Rings May of twenty one. Spider Man December of twenty one. Yeah, so like we have stuff coming, but it's like man, Doctor Strange is until March of twenty twenty two. Like that's crazy. <laughs> Well, who knows? They might be pushed back some more if people can't wear a, a damn piece of cloth, of cloth over their face for like thirty minutes and then they're dead. But you know, I know. Would you even? Uh, would you even go to a movie theater? Because I think Wonder Woman is releasing uh, in October, I believe. And like, I, I don't. I a movie theater. Like, there's been a lot of things I've missed in my life, right? Uh, coming up you know, recently, you know, like stuff like concerts, stuff like even just going out and being like, be able to sit in the student union and having a nice meal and stuff like that. And I under, I'm not criticizing anybody. I understand why these regulations are in place, but so the other, like just, uh, being able to shake someone's hand, be like, nice to meet you, uh, type thing, you know, um, movie theater, sitting in a movie theater to watch a movie is not necessarily something I miss. Uh, do you? Honestly, no. I mean, I've never really been a huge movie person. Like, I'll watch, you know, a couple movies a year that it really interests me. But if it was easier to pirate them, I would just watch them at home, you know? <laughs> like, Wait, if I so- had the, the motivation to pirate a lot of stuff, I wouldn't go to the theater. I mean, I like the theater. It's sometimes it's just a little bit much dealing with it all. Right, right, right. So, you work at a drive-in theater and don't like movies. No, I, I like movies. It's just... I don't know. I feel like like the time I could be spending uh, watching a movie that I don't necessarily really care about. Like, like I wouldn't leisurely watch a movie just out of nowhere for the most part because I'm like, I need to be interested in it. Like, I'd spend that time rather, like, I don't know, drawing or playing a, like a game or something where I can be, like, interactive with it. That's why, like, I haven't really watched TV in, like, a year and a half, two years. Like, I don't sit and watch TV anymore. I just can't do it. Not even like a Netflix stuff. I mean, yeah, like the 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 odd series where like I'll watch it through. Like, oh, I'm really interested, like the Mandalorian and Clone Wars and stuff like that stuff. I'll definitely sit through and watch. And right now, we're uh, me and Ava are watching uh, Avatar. Um, we just started the third season finally. So that's like there's there's a couple things I get really interested in, but I don't know, like. I can't sit there and scroll through Netflix and be like, Hey, I just want to watch this random. I don't know. I've just never been, I don't want to like spend ha- an hour watching something and be like, Oh, I didn't, didn't really like that. And be like, well, well, that just took an hour out of my day. <laughs> yeah, no, I get it. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm kind of the same way. I've been, I, I watched tiger King. I took two months to finish Ozark and, uh, that, that's, that was my quarantine, uh, binges if that's why if pe- the people are wondering why quarantine binges did not last that long uh that's why uh, there just wasn't many much bitching going on but uh, i think i supplement with the fact that i'm just a neurotic uh sports person watcher i mean there's been so much sports recently 
uh, that I've been able to uh, do that. But now, who knows? I mean, college football is not really happening. So, and that's going to take out a big chunk of my Saturdays, um, which is sad. But other than that, I mean, but that's just right. Like, I've been I've been picking up on hockey a lot. I know I texted you about that uh, the other day. I've been watching a lot of hockey. I'm starting to understand the game more. Uh, and stuff like that. that. That's that's me. I just, but you're right though with the whole thing. Just going through Netflix, I'm like, hmm, maybe I'll try this uh, series out. It's two seasons, whatever. Like, I, I just, I can't, I can't do it unless it's something that I already know that I'm like, this fits my demographic. Like all, all the Marvel shows that are, I don't know when those are coming out because uh, they're supposed to be the end of this year, but I doubt that they are now. Um, like all of those shows, like I'll watch because I already know that fits in my stuff or like anything Batman. I'm like, yep, we're in. But other than <laughs> that, you know, I'm kind of like, eh. Yeah, uh, there's so many things have been delayed, and it's just like I get it, and I, I I I agree with most things. Like, yeah, either delay it because you know it's you know you know you don't want to get a bunch of people to go watch a movie, or like you don't think you're going to be ready yet because we're in the midst of a pandemic and the workers aren't going to be able to you know like you don't want to make them hate their lives in crunch time. But man, I was looking forward to things this year and then it's just like i get it i understand it i actually support it but man i'm just yeah i wanted things <laughs> do you think i, wanted, a, I uh, to look forward to this year and I, it's just not <laughs> happening yeah well the thing i look forward to is this ending and it seems like it's never going to end uh do you uh do you think like uh i've heard about this uh talked about with some things uh, obviously, it's working in basketball and hockey. I know you're not the biggest sports guy, so you may not be like paying uh, directly attention to all that stuff. But do you know what I'm talking about with the bubble concept uh, for those sports? I, I do not. <laughs> okay, so no, no okay, so base, I'll explain. So basically, the NBA and NHL, like before they started playing, they brought everybody to this bubble. Like in the NBA has it in Orlando, the NHL has two in Edmonton and Toronto right now. Uh, and they do tests, you know, every uh, couple days, whatever. They you had to uh, have a negative test like a week or five days, something like that, prior to playing and all that stuff. So like, there's been no tests the past couple of weeks. They've been able to play and do all that, all that stuff. There's no fans. There's only a very select people in that bubble. And you can't leave. You can't leave, and nobody can come in who's not already in the uh, in the bubble. And if you leave and come back as a player, you have to quarantine for four days and get like a couple negative tests, then you can play. So. Hmm. Yeah, so it's worked really well. So I wonder, would that, I mean, I'm not, like, obviously it's not the best existence, and I've heard, like, a lot of NBA players are already getting a bit restless with being not, not being able to see uh, some of their family members and their kids and such like that, which makes sense, of course. Um, do you think that type of model, though, would work for some of these shows where you're doing filming in a film studio and stuff like that? I mean, I would say, yeah, if everyone was on the same page and stuff. I, I can't. I didn't look too much into it, but I saw something about Tom Cruise doing something in Europe that's like that, or Mission Impossible, maybe. Could be. There's like eight of them. Yeah, I can't. I can't remember. Like for the new one, at least they're trying to keep filming, but everyone doesn't leave the set basically, like or the certain area, and everyone gets tested all the time. I I can't remember. That would be a good strategy but it, it'd have to be something that everyone's you know okay with or else you know you don't want people to feel like they're trapped and have all those issues along with it but i don't know let's see tom cruise is building covid free village on former royal air force base in oxfordshire in england to resume filming on michigan impossible seven damn i was one off of how many they have <laughs> there we go and that one yeah <laughs> Uh, that that was, I mean, brilliant, brilliant call there uh, by you that you uh, were able to remember that. that. I mean, yeah, so I guess, okay, maybe some people are trying it. Once again, I don't think it's the best existence. And I guess the, the secondary question going with that would be, well, the NBA and has a players association and they collectively bargained this solution, uh, even if they are getting restless there and they voted on it. Like, I don't know if there's like, when you have people, you're hiring people for a movie, you know, they'd be like, oh, you don't want to do this? All right, fine, you're off. And then, then what? Then what happens? So, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I just... Is it that hard to just quarantine everyone for, like, a month and then go on? Because everyone's so upset. Oh, look at how much damage this is causing. Yeah, 
because y'all keep trying to do all this shit. And that's why we're still in it. Yeah, but do you, I mean, like I get there's things that need to be done, mm-hmm. but we can do those things and just not do other things. But <laughs> I don't know. It just seems so, I don't know. Have, uh, have your opinions of COVID though changed over the pandemic? Cause at first I was terrified and now I'm, I'm cautious, but I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not afraid to go out or anything anymore, you know, because we, it was initially, you know, reported as some type of super bug that infects everybody as soon as you touch it and it stays on surfaces for so long. And now it's kind of like, okay, well, if you're doing the things you should be doing in general, you know, you're washing hands, you're wearing your mask, you're avoiding large, large groups inside and stuff like that, you know, it seems like it, it's pretty, it's, it's t- actually tougher to get as long as you're doing like a, a checklist of six things. But I think to your point, I'm guessing, I guess to your point though, you would say that most of the, a lot of the people aren't doing those six things, right? Or whatever the list may yeah. be. I mean, my opinions have been, I don't know. I don't, I think they're slightly changed because like when it first started, I don't know. I don't have the biggest reaction. Um, I was just kind of like, okay, I'll just chill in my room and just do that. Like I can, I can deal with that. Like, oh, okay. Um, I'm like seeing the case numbers spike so rapidly and like, yeah, like, damn, that, that, that is, that is very scary. And then over quarantine, it looked like, you know, okay, great. We're doing a great job. And over this, over the summer, I guess I kind of got pretty, um, complacent, I guess. Like I, I I admit I would, I wore my mask all the time, but I would just let it sag or, you know, just kind of fiddle with it. Like not really being the, as cautious about it. Um, so I, I would say that like my opinion would have been at, at the end of the summer, like, Oh, this wasn't that big of a deal. But then seeing as soon as everyone tries to start school up again, like how we're doing now and seeing all these cases from um, like elementary schools reporting, all these kids have it. Um, Miami university, the, uh, the great old, great old university I go to um, 27 student al- athletes just got it, just would confirm to test positive uh, yesterday. 10 other people were tested positive a week ago and it's it's like okay um you know over summer people were just kind of chilling it wasn't so bad but now i'm kind of scared again because like dude stay home don't be an idiot and we could be done with this because it's bigger than just us and there's people that actually are you know um vulnerable to this stuff and we're just not taking it seriously and it's also been taken into such a political <laughs> like argument that i don't know like i feel desensitized and passionate about it at the same time i don't know yeah i mean colleges are in a really tough place right because on one hand you know you're gathering tens of thousands at most schools thousands at uh smaller schools of people who i'm not making excuses for but they're in their 20s you know they're not they're not thinking the clearest sometimes they're just like whatever uh Oh, yeah, let's go do this and have this. And I mean, whatever, like I, but you only live once or whatever, you know, there, there, there's that the world's consequences don't seem to affect them that much. And COVID's a good example of that because 20 year olds have less severe outcomes, you know, uh, a- aggregated than a lot of uh, older people or elderly people. So, you know, just off of that, you'd be like, well, okay, shut them down, you know, or whatever. And I think a lot of schools have transitioned a lot to online, uh, for sure, I know at least UCF we've uh, we've cut down our foot traffic on campus a lot. You know, I'm all online for the fall right now, so stuff like that, and it, it doesn't bug me. I mean, you and I have had private conversations about that. Like, it's like whatever. Like, the, my courses will be fine delivered over Zoom. I'm not too worried about it. You know, uh, stuff like that. But at the same on the same coin, you have a lot of services offered by schools. I mean, the uh, the amount of services, at least for us, you know, that UCF offers, including like cognitive um, and, and stuff like cognitive care, like UCF cares we have down here. We have CAPS, which is cognitive and counseling that you can get for free with your tuition. We have some people rely on UCF for food with the dining halls, um, you know, and obviously the housing if you're not not me, but at least if you're an out of state student, maybe getting on campus was the only thing you could do and stuff like that. Like there, there are so many different services that these universities also offer to where I 
completely understand the, why they don't shut down. And I would argue with people who say they should because it's like, well, you don't understand the actual uh, value a university provides. For some people, it is just go to class and whatever, get your degree and be done with it. But for a lot of other people, a lot of people rely on the university for a lot of different things. And that's that's why they, they I think they're still open and at least to some capacity should remain open throughout throughout this uh, no matter what. As But I think paired with that, if you, uh, you have to have a, uh, a big campaign and push behind it for the uh, mask wearing, for the social distancing. I know we had to complete a module for training before we were allowed to go back to campus, at least for classes and stuff like that on our uh, – where all our classes are and such, and we have a big uh, campaign called uh, Armor Up, you know, because we're all we're all knights, we're all medieval like that. So Armor Up is our big campaign uh, down here, though, to to make, to ensure that we're able to keep those uh, those services open for a lot of those students. Yeah, I, I agree with you definitely. Um, like the experience at a university being there is so much. I don't know it, for me personally, at least, it's so much better in terms of learning and stuff with the resources you get. Um, so I definitely, I, I agree with keeping them open at, like, at least partially for the most part, because, and then you have, you know, graduate students and stuff. They, they, need, they need to do their research and everything. Um, but that all comes with the individual responsibilities that everyone has that most people just are ignoring. And it's just so infuriating. Cause like we could, we could, basically open up for the most part if everyone just still kept social distancing you know uh proper mask wearing like sanitization like this doesn't need to be that hard and it's and it's that population that doesn't care that is just ruining it for everyone else because then it brings arguments well we got we got to close down and then it's like well we need to stay open because we need the resources and, yeah. you know, like we, they both could be, we could coexist these two ideas if it wasn't for this group that's making such issues, polarizing other people against each other because, you know, obviously something's wrong here. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I agree with you. And I also think too, like with, I think there's been a little bit more push behind this recently because at first it was like, you know, uh, just stay quarantined, deal with it. Like we, uh, like the older generations went through worse. Like you can do this, you know, whatever type of thing. Like you know, don't see anybody. And I, I think as this has gradually gone on, you know, the smart people have been like, okay, like we can hang out in these specific, you know, type of people. Like I know they're doing their part, we're doing ours. You know, it'll be safe, whatever type of thing. And so I think with that, like obviously, like especially, I think you know, you'll you'll agree with this is like, I like if I didn't see my friends with for like months on end, right? You know. I, I'd, I'd lose it. Like, I just, I'm, I'm a social person. That's part of my release. That's part of my stress release. Like, and I, obviously I love to talk. Uh, I have this here for that reason. <laughs> um, but like that type of thing, like it, it, it's just happened. So I was like, okay, well don't get in groups of more than 15 people or 10 people or whatever the number is. I'm not sure what the exact number, but you know, or just a ridiculous amount. You know, don't go to clubs, don't go to bars. Like just don't, don't do that. And have like little um, house get togethers, not house parties, because those are crazy. And we've all seen footage of those. But, you know, like if, if you have a couple of people over to watch some sporting event, as I've done with, you know, I've mentioned before in the UFC, I haven't been canceled yet for it. So I guess it's okay. it's being more accepted now. Um, <laughs> it's stuff like that. But, you know, and my mom was nice enough to get me a temp check. So temp check, temperature checker. I mean, they're not I think they're 30 bucks or something on Amazon right now. They're 35. They're not that pricey. They're super easy to use. You stick it in someone's forehead. And, uh, and that's, that's how you, that's how you do it. And, uh, you, you say, if you're under a hundred, come in, if you're over a hundred, get out. And that's that. <laughs> and it, it's like you said, it's not hard, but people, you know, will. but, but the people our age, they're like, well, I just, I need to see my friends. And then they don't think about well, part two or three of that, uh, of that sentence there is very crucial to the containment of this, especially in these areas where now we're having just thousands of kids come into a, come into a campus and stuff like that. And in the city around it as well. And if they're if they're not thinking about these type of things, whatever, like there's there's a way you can smartly hang out with friends and be safe and stuff like that. And um, people aren't, you know, they don't think about it that much, and they should be right. And even like us over quarantine, after what two or three weeks, we decided to start hanging out because we both haven't done anything in two or three weeks, so we knew each other. You know, it was 
basically okay to say, Hey, we can, we can hang out now. And we were, yeah. and we did multiple times because we never went anywhere except maybe our job. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you think the health part of this has been, uh, under, under reporting? You know, a lot of people talk about masks. They talk about how we should shut down some businesses and such like that. Um, but what I've seen less about, and I listened to the Joe Rogan show, so this may be me being influenced by that a bit in full disclosure, but you know, he, he makes a point how a lot of people on the national level aren't talking about different vitamins that have been shown to help pre- prevent severe outcomes, how, you know, taking care of, uh, weight exercise, you know, a lot of the American diet filled with sugar and stuff like that, uh, influences worse outcomes with any disease and COVID's no exception. Do, do you think that's been a little bit underplayed and instead it's been, um, more taking the political route where now it's a fight over stuff like masks and businesses and such like that instead of the purely health science type thing. So you're saying, you're saying like the aspect of people not even eating healthy, which might be an effect on COVID rates sort of thing. Like people yeah, not let, taking care of themselves could also be affecting the rates of infection we're seeing. Oh yeah, for sure. hundred percent. Well, I guess okay. maybe not the rates of, rates of infection. Sure. But I think also outcomes and I think it, it goes with any, uh, with any illness. Like if you, I mean, if you're overweight, you know, or obese, like you're going to have a worse outcome with many diseases. Uh, no matter what, no matter what the infection is. And co- like I said, COVID's no different. Um, and that just makes sense, right? You know, it's just like you're not as healthy as you as you can be. And therefore, you know, your body is, is doing a whole different uh, dance of trying to get your, trying to keep you alive when you're not healthy, so. Oh, yeah, then, then I absolutely agree. Like, <laughs> if you were to say that, you know, the average American going through COVID compared to like the average European, like they'd have the same, chance i'd say you're wrong because have you seen what we are pushed to be eating over here and everything like people aren't healthy i mean they are but like a vast vastly more people than like europe or other countries or other continents they're not healthy man or we're not healthy Mm -hmm. like the the culture of i'm just eating crap (laughs) And it was, it was just wild because, like, when I went to Europe and I came back, I'm like, damn, do you see the stuff that I'm actually eating? I was just um, – I was talking about that today with my um, my roommate, and the whole time I was talking about it, I was making some mac and cheese and everything, which I love. And I was just kind of, like, pouring out <laughs> – straightening out the, uh, the noodles, and I'm like, damn, this almost looks like it's slimy. Like, do I really eat this stuff, man? Is this really what I'm eating? I ate it, of course, because I didn't want it to go to waste. But um, <laughs> it's just this is the stuff we eat, and we wonder why people get sick so much, or we wonder why maybe our death rates are a little higher. Like people, their bodies can't take it a lot more than others. Yeah, for sure, and I, I think it's become like you, you like you're hitting on here. Like it's so part and ingrained of our society now here in America that. Yeah, it's just it's something that people don't think you can change. And I think that's part of the reason why, you know, people don't don't talk about it in regards to COVID or talk about it less than than I feel like they need to because it's it's not about um like changing your health, you know, getting healthier. It's all about, you know, shutting things down or, you know, not going out or not seeing anybody, you know? And and I feel like that's the raw that's not necessarily the right type of message to send. I mean obviously like we can agree like Social distancing works. Uh, you know, masks work. I'm not saying they don't, but I'm also saying a big component of outcomes is the person's health who may or may not get COVID, you know? Yeah. And how we say, you know, um, younger people, you know, they're, they're less likely to, you know, die. Like, they're much more healthy, you know. Yes, but we can push that to older people as well a lot more. Like, have you seen... <laughs> Like if you think about an old person a lot of times, you think just a you know an old fat person that just sits on their couch all day, like doesn't take care of themselves. You see so many more like child uh, obesity rates and everything, and it's no wonder people are so susceptible not only because of their age but because of their lifestyle, man. Like there is not good lifestyle. Yeah, you mentioned how uh, when you were over in Italy and stuff like that, the walking there and the 
the non-car traveling was it insane to you and something that you really wanted to uh, implement, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's definitely uh, that's definitely something I wish was more uh, possible over here, you know? Like, just have stuff in walking distance because driving places is annoying. Like, you know it's annoying. Like, half the time I don't want to go places, um, even over here in, at school, because I'm like, I have to drive. And I don't want to get in my car and drive. I'd rather just walk across the street, you know what I mean? Or walk down the street, actually have a good time going somewhere instead of dealing with shitty drivers and everything. <laughs> or having yeah, to find a place to park. and Right. Yeah, think about some things. Reflect on the day. Yeah, reflect. <laughs> Actually enjoy your experience and get you know some health benefits out of it. Yeah, you would think. You would think, but uh, that's not something we uh, we like to do here, apparently. We just like to argue. We do love to argue and believe in fake news. Fake news. Actual, um, actual fake news, not the shit that's been labeled fake news which is just incredible and i don't even know if you want to get into this right now but it my breaks my mind <laughs> i mean i don't know i mean the the rnc just kicked off right this uh this past week so uh it's already getting a full full thing of that i mean uh, oh here, man okay. did you see some of those clips yeah katie was speaker? showing me some yeah oh, man it's it it's mind-numbing like it's not that i disagree like be a Republican. I'm I'm independent at like but I don't agree with a lot of Republican stuff. But like, okay, you can have those opinions and you're valid to have them. Like I can't tell you that your opinion is wrong. It's not the one for me. But the stuff they were saying was just culty. And you can't prove me otherwise. That is stuff from a cult or a fascist dictatorship. Do you think uh, Republicans and Democrats have gotten more culty though, at least the parties themselves? I think this presidency has really, really done a lot worse to separate the two. Because okay. cause even, like, I was thinking about it. Like, if to say, like, someone, say Obama was president still, but he was starting to become, like, a, l- a lunatic like Trump is, just saying blatantly false things and everything. And then a Republican leader wants to come and take his place, but he has ideals that are vastly different to yours. Would you... Would you accept the lunatic that Obama has become? Or would you be like, I don't agree with this guy's policies, but this guy needs to be out of office. I, I, I would like to say that I would, I would kick the guy out of office. But for a lot of people, I don't think that's true. I think they hold to their ideals more and become more radicalized when that divide gets pushed so far like it is now. You know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Am I making sense? Yeah, I think so. And I think, too, a lot of things with it, like what you're saying, like, it's just, it's almost hypocrisy in a way. I don't know if that's the right way to describe it, but, like, a lot of people, the reason they voted for Trump and stuff like that, like, the, like, whatever the reason is, they, um, it, it hasn't, it hasn't, like, followed through. And I know of some people who have actually, some of the stuff Trump's done, like, with China and stuff like that, taking a hard stance on China. I don't have a real opinion on this. Um, and stuff like that, but they've actually caused more ignoring the type of stuff he says, which is hard to do, I admit. But if you just take the one <laughs> issue in isolation, it's like I actually liked that his policy that he's done here. He just talks like an idiot all the time. So, like, but the original reason they voted for for him, uh, or might have liked him, is is not there that he would bring some change to the office, something like that. Like that, it just hasn't come to fruition. I don't think. Oh, I definitely think he's changed what it is. To- what the office is, what it is to be like in office. He's definitely um, made it more of a, you know, a oligarchy and stuff. He's definitely brought changes. But as to whether it's good for our democracy is up for debate, which it shouldn't be, but, you know. <laughs> what do you mean by that he's made it an oligarchy? Just like you see, you see the people he's put into the offices, and they're all his rich friends or his sibling, or not his siblings, his his uh, family members, and none of them seem to be qualified, not even him. So it's just, I, you, you get, I, I saw I saw a thing today about um, the postmaster general. He was like, he admitted, you know, I admit I don't really understand a lot about how post stamps work. Like, <laughs> you are the head of the postal service. <laughs> oh, That's hilarious. But you're a rich, you're a rich dude that's friends with Trump. That's why you're in your position. 
oh yeah, I mean, you're qualified, right? It's people that need to be in those jobs aren't in those jobs. <laughs> and the people yeah. that people that are in those jobs are actively working to destroy those jobs. And it's blatant and no one no one says it. Oh, people do say things about it, but it's somehow so debatable. <laughs> Like he said, he would stop destroying these um, sorting machines for post offices, which was like, okay, good. Finally, like we talked some sense into him. And now there's more reports about more postal machines being destroyed as we speak. And I'm like, like, dude, come on. How much more does it take? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's rough. I mean, that, that whole uh, bit with the cognitive test thing he did was hilarious. Like when he was explaining it to the reporter. The test for dementia, congratulations. Be so prideful that, I, you know, I don't think half the other people in the country could, could pass, you know, like. Yeah. And, wow, and it's also just, <laughs> it's also just sad too. Cause you know, I mean, you, you would hope here. And I think the reason why we're even talking about this is because there, there isn't uh a glamorous opposition present either, because you'd hope you'd be like, all right, this is uh we ha- we have the new man coming in. He's gonna do great things, everything. And then it's uh, Joe Biden. It's like, oh man, this guy also is not is not the best uh, here coming in too. So I mean, it's just uh, you know, well, I I don't know. I mean, I remember I was uh, neither of us were eligible to a vote in the last presidential election. I remember though uh, hearing a lot about how it was the uh, worst election ever. You know, blah blah. Too bad options. Blah blah blah. Whatever. Um, and some of these two are worse than the last time. So uh, here we are again. We uh, keep setting records here in the, uh, for the low points. Well, I think at the end of the day, Biden is better than Hillary. I just think this is such a worse election because last election we were like, there's no way he can even get to the candidacy. And then he got it. And then we're like, there's no way he could be the president. And then he got it. And then we see the shit he's pulled. And then now trying to say, like, there's no way he's going to get it again. And the the fact that there is such a high chance that it's possible, that's for me. That's what makes it so much worse. Because it's like if he gets a second term, I I, I, I think we're done. I, like I I don't think I don't see I don't see a future for us really. Yeah, I, 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 I I'm not saying it's the end of the world, but I really can't I, I really can't see a good future for us. I I, yeah. I don't. I think life's going to become really shitty if we if we let him uh, not. Not maybe personally for us, because I, I'd i be willing to, to bet that neither of us have really experienced a lot of difference in this president in, in our personal lives. Yeah. But in like in societal, like the way society views life, like the way a lot of people are going through life has changed dramatically. And that's stuff that people don't realize because they're like, the economy is great. Look you know, this and that, like my life hasn't even changed. There's not, see, it's not even that bad. And it's like, okay, well you have to take yourselves out of your shoes for a second. And that's hard to do. A hundred percent. Yeah. Especially in a lot of these areas where there's not a lot of diversity uh, across the country, you know, everywhere. And there's not, um, that you're not getting that type of experience with, uh, with other people. Sometimes it's just ignorance and it's, it's really hard to, uh, uh, fight ignorance, you know, when, when there's not uh, that knowledge, you know, on hand, ready, available for, for them, because then you don't even seek it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, it's. I don't know. If, I, I'm not going to say that I understand all these things about politics, which I don't. But I, I don't know. I feel like you can use common sense and stuff to to see what's really what's really happening right now, and. You can, you can get this news from anywhere. I feel like even Fox News can't even really cover this shit up. Or even CNN can't even sensationalize it enough to where you can be like... Like, both both are going to be, of course, biased towards each other, or towards one another. But you, you have to be able to see through that stuff, right? Like, it can't you can't be that dense or that susceptible, right? Right? I right? mean, <laughs> it depends. I think a lot on the... Uh, on the growing up, uh, where you're from, you know, uh, we were talking last night at a dinner. I had a couple guys how uh, North Korea, the North Korean people, you know, and we're not at this level at all, but it's uh, it's not as far off from it as you think, you know, with some of the censoring and stuff like that. Is that they just believe stuff and they just get told and they go, okay. Like I was, um, the guy I had dinner with was mentioned a couple different things. Like they, met, I think is that Kim Jong Un doesn't poop. 
Like he, he can't poop. <laughs> like that's that's the thing they actually believe or something like that. And I said I think they I believe it's the 2014 World Cup. The North Korean they just told him they won the World Cup. The North Korea won and they didn't qualify. Like so. And how we're, it was all back to China because China's doing similar stuff, obviously, and China's a whole other set of issues right now as well, uh, both in regards to America and just uh, some of their practices they're putting in with uh, how they're treating. I don't know the uh, exact definition, but it's a group of Muslims that they are right now going through and uh, uh, sterilizing and stuff like that um, through their uh, through their. Um, you know, through their people, which is uh, ho- truly horrible. That's something not a lot of people here are talking about. I know I saw it a couple times on the news, but other than that, there's there's uh, nothing going on there. Uh, point is that um, I was going to lead back to how when I went to Cuba, I experienced this firsthand because we were on a lot of tours and stuff like that through uh, Havana and stuff like that. And they're like, Fidel Castro is the greatest leader he in the world. He does this. Our health care is the best in the world. Well, I'm thinking like, oh, my God. Like I was doing the math and I'm like, okay, so she's like 25, 30. And she never grew up in non-communist Cuba. And I was like, oh my God, like she just, this is just the history book. They just wrote it just did no with nothing. And so I think it just depends. Like if you're, if you grew up watching Fox news your whole life, um, that's just, it's just what it is. Like to you, that's just what, what happened, you know, or vice versa for, uh, I don't know what the most left one is. I, I'm not going to go here and try to, uh, uh, say that what the equivalent of Fox on the left is. If it's a CNN or NBC, whatever, the, the viewers, the listeners can, uh, viewers, uh, the listeners can uh, come in and uh, think about that themselves. But whatever, like either way, like that's just it's just what it is, and that creates a separate ideology. And then people are just like, no, this is how it is. This is this is what this is what I do. You know, whatever. It's it, that's just it, it. It sucks, but I mean, it's it's very hard to overcome that type of stuff. Yeah, I, I mean, even we have you know stuff like that, especially here, as well as overseas, and it's you you got to be able to sift through that, right? <laughs> it's stuff. You would of think course, it's going to be is you know you're not going to know any better, but you got to use some common sense. You can't just read things on Facebook and be like, oh, okay, cool. That never like nothing is right on Facebook. Nothing. Facebook, even Twitter, not that platform anymore. Twitter's completely changed. Oh, Twitter's so bad. Twitter's Dude, so bad. As soon as people, someone's like, oh, you hear about this person? Then that person's canceled. That person's done. I've never seen so much toxicity that on Twitter. Like, I like Twitter. I like going through the funny things. And as soon as even, like, little things, um, like different, you know, TV shows or games, you see, like, their accounts will tweet something. And it's just all these toxic people like, no, I heard that you did this, 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 this. And it's like you were just listening to a rumor or something that you saw on a random obscure website. And then you're just attacking people for it. Come on. Yeah, it's, it's horrible. It's uh, Twitter's bad. Instagram's not as bad because um, it's just pictures and stuff like that. But Twitter and Facebook are the two where I'm just like, I, I mean, I'm not on Facebook at all. I don't have it installed. Uh, on my phone, but Twitter, I mean, like Twitter's been something I've really, like, avoided recently, and I've been trying mm-hmm. to decrease my social media in general, just because I'm like, this crap just sucks, it just, it, it really <laughs> is just a horrible thing for your brain, um, and it's being proven out now, and I really think it was just a waste of time for a lot of things, you know, I don't feel the need to promo myself for anything, um, except for this, obviously, uh, <laughs> but, like, for... But for a lot, like Twitter, definitely, I think is the one where I'm just like, this is just icky. This is gross. Yeah, there's a lot of good comedy, and then once people start getting hard opinions, you're like, damn. Yep. It's, it's hard problem. to go through. <laughs> so, and we fix it by being nicer. That, that's that's what I'm gonna say. Be nicer to people. Goodness. And that goes it's with that. that so also impulsive. goes with people. Would you say? I said, or just not being so impulsive. That's true too, but I think that also goes. People say be nicer. It's like yeah, let's be nicer, each other. but it also goes with if it ha- if people have different opinions than you, give them a little bit of room to explain it because it could just be ignorance straight up, and but people will just be like this person, this opinion, they're done, they're out. It's like well, yeah, if you don't agree with it, fair, but also you know there are, there are opinions where it's just like this is horrible, this is wrong, obviously, and I don't think I need to spell those out for people. I think they understand, but uh, on on the same uh, on the flip side, like. 
there are a lot of things where like I was just thinking something, you know, growing up in our like I think you know we we graduated from the same high school, same class. There were what what would you say it was like ninety eight percent a white about probably in our town, and it's not a bad town at all. It's just a small town in Ohio, but you you know what I mean. Like it's 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 pretty segmented, so they're pretty um pretty not diverse. So I came down here uh, to Florida. I was like, wow, like you know, a lot of campuses are like this. Like wow, this is it's crazy. And I had a lot of you know just preconceived notions and just I didn't understand like you know. Dating Katie has been a great example because I had no clue how distinct Filipino culture was from the rest of uh, the Pacific Islander group. And it's crazy. And it's, uh, and I said, it's like, that's a great thing. Like, there's just been so much uh, learning I've, I, I've been able to do from that. And if people had, you know, crushed me and shut me down for some of the stuff, I was like, but that's not this. They're like, no, 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 that's, that's not what this is. Like, that, that's not how this works. Like, let me explain. And they're very kind about, and I, and I learned, but a lot of people just be like, nope, done, out, never mind. I can't even listen to you anymore. <laughs> and that, that's, that's the, but that's not the way to progress forward. And those people will claim they're, pro, they're being progressive, right? Am, am I wrong or am I right? I think you're right. And like, I, th- I think about that way too much to myself about how my, the, my opinions in high school, our opinions in high school, they're vastly different than what they are now. Oh, yeah. Vastly different. It, it so it changes so much when you actually go and talk to people that isn't from your bubble. Yep. And that would have been something I like, and I'm pretty sure I did like scoff at before. Like, what do you mean? Like, I'm open minded. Why would I? Why would I not? Like, I'm I'm a good person. I know I know about all these things, and it's like I don't know all of these things. I had to talk with people to learn about these things, and now I'm like, okay, I can make more of an educated decision about it. And I become a lot more educated in general. No, I, I agree completely. So that, that's something that's something that we, we all have to do. I wrote about in my uh, a lot of my medical school secondaries, just like pursue education, pursue knowledge, books, reading, not slanted news, uh, magazines, whatever, talking to people, talking to the firsthand people who go through it. I think that's the most important one and not over social media. Cause there's no nuance over social media. You can't get, can convey a complex idea in 280 characters. I don't know how many times I have to say that cause it's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, but I know you know that, but, um, yeah, I, I gotta, th- I gotta get out of here, but I mean, this is uh, 45 minutes here. I mean, we just, uh, we're just going through it. Uh, no script here. And this is, this is great. I think, uh, I think we covered a lot of ground here, and I hope we get to stay at college throughout this COVID and we learn things because there's still a lot in this world that we uh, do not understand. And I, I don't say we just in general. I just think a lot of people, uh, obviously, across everybody, everybody has stuff to learn. Right, let's go with that. There yeah. we go. We're not singling anybody out. Everybody yeah, has things next, to learn. <laughs> next time we'll be uh, trying to go down such the rabbit hole about politics and stuff because i know it's it's exhausting to talk and listen to about <laughs> it can be but i mean it, sometimes you have to and sometimes it provides a uh, conversation i know when i first kicked this off you know I, I told you like i don't really politics isn't really something i do but now i see that that's not acceptable really for anything like it it, it should be it should pervade everything we do but it, it should play a very large role in all of our lives because at the end of the day it affects all of us uh, some in more ways than others and some just in different ways so Right. Like I don't, I would, I never, I never would get into politics until like now I, the only thing I really argue is like facts about stuff. You know what I yeah. mean? <laughs> like, I don't, I don't, I'm not on one side really compared to the other. I mean, pretty much I'm this time, but usually I'm not. And it's just, dude, <laughs> y'all are making, I feel like I have to talk because people aren't listening to the things that are actually true. <laughs> just going off their own you know, Facebook news sites. And it's, it's just, Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, for sure. No, I, I I agree with you. I know it's a it's tough, but I think uh, I think there's a really solid middle ground for a lot of these things. Like you're saying, like I feel like we see a lot of the worst one percent on either side. I think there's actually mm-hmm. a lot of people. If you're if people are brave enough to go and talk to people, I think there's a lot of people who actually want to talk about these things. Just be like, oh my goodness, like just someone who wants to listen and uh, and understand. I think is really crucial uh, as we get older as well. So, boom, exactly. that's that, that's what we're gonna leave the people with today. Thorn, thank you for coming on. It was a it was a great time. Good good catching up with you as always. We'll try not to uh, we'll try not to make such a hiatus next time. <laughs> I know. Oh, for sure. No way. Or no I will try way. to. That is. No way. No question. We'll be back on pr- plenty soon. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs>